everyone, welcome to my research vessel. Today I'm in southern Puget Sound. I have Vashon Island off to my right and to my left is North Tacoma. And I am out here today to collect data for my monthly time series. And part of that data set includes Secchi depth readings. So this tool is called a Secchi disk and it was developed in the mid 1800s by an Italian astrophysicist named Angelo Secchi. People have been using it continuously since the 1800s. So what this tool has is a flat disk and this one has two very high contrast colors, the black and the white. On the back side is a metal weight, and this is a really common feature of oceanographic instruments because we wanna make sure that when we lower instruments into the water column that they sink straight down rather than kind of drifting off to the side. And then the disc and weight are attached to this line, which I have marked every meter. So this black marking is one meter. So from the disc to that mark, and then I also have, the next one is at two meters and all the way up to about 10 meters, which is the highest reading that I get in these waters. Now, the purpose of this tool is to measure water transparency or water clarity. So essentially, if there are lots of particles in the water, the Secchi depth reading will be a low number. And if the water is really clear and there aren't very many particles in it, the Secchi depth reading will be much higher. And the two main types of particles that we get in the water here that will absorb the sunlight or scatter the sunlight are sediment particles or plankton. So in order to take a Secchi depth reading, all I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this disc into the water until I can't see it anymore. So right now it is at zero meters depth. It's right at the surface and I'm just going to let it fall. That weight is going to drag it down. And right now the one meter mark is right at the water surface, but I can still clearly see the disc. Maybe you can too. So I'm going to let it keep going. Now it's down to two, still very visible, three, there's four meters, five meters, six meters, definitely getting more difficult to see. Okay, now it's at seven meters and I can just barely see it. I'm gonna pull it up a little bit. Yep, and then let it go back down to seven. I'm gonna call that a seven meter depth. Okay, so I need to record that in my notebook off the north side of the boat seven meters okay and usually i just do two measurements while i'm out here the other one i'll do off the other side of the boat and usually they are very close if not exactly the same six and a half Let's see, can I see it at seven? The ripples in the water make it a little bit tricky. I can see it, but just barely. So I'm gonna call this one seven meters as well. There are some real advantages to using a tool that is so simple in design. Um, one advantage is that I know that I don't have to worry about this thing running out of batteries or the sensors not being calibrated or getting broken. Well, actually, I do have to worry about this getting broken because one time I dropped one on a dock and it split in two, so it was unusable that day. But other than that, this tool is pretty reliable. Um, another advantage besides its reliability and its simplicity is the fact that it's been in use since the 1800s. So if we want to compare the water column of today to the water column from a really long time ago, we can do that using a Secchi disk. Now the problem is that the numbers might not be directly comparable because Secchi disk depth 
depends on multiple factors. So you can find Secchi discs that are black and white or solid white, and the color difference will make the Secchi depth slightly different. Um, another thing is the disc size. Whether the disc is really large in diameter or much smaller in diameter, that will have an impact. The material that the disc is made from, some materials are more reflective than others, so that will make a difference. Um, what else? I mentioned the sea state, whether the sea surface is really calm and flat or whether there are a lot of ripples and waves can make a difference. Cloud cover matters. Um, the distance that the observer is above the water surface. So right now I'm basically sitting on the water surface in my kayak. But if I was in a taller boat and I was much, um, much higher off the water, that could also change the Secchi depth reading. Whether there are shadows, um, what the sun angle is for that day. And then another big one is a polarized filter. So I have polarized sunglasses, but I always make sure that I'm not wearing them when I take my sucky depth readings because that can make a difference. Besides all of those things that can make a slight difference, um, another disadvantage of this tool is that the resolution is pretty low. So I have my line marked every meter, and I certainly could mark it every half meter and every quarter of a meter, um, but that's probably about the best resolution that I can get with this tool. Um, so like all scientific tools and equipment, it has its advantages and its disadvantages. But I've been coming out here every month since May of 2021 in order to get Secchi depth readings. Um, so I have a pretty long time series now, but in addition to doing Secchi depth measurements, um, I also use this little Kestrel to measure the wind speed, the air temperature, and the atmospheric pressure. And then other things I note, I always take a photo of the sky, um, so I know cloud cover. I take a video as I'm paddling out or pedaling out so that I can know what the sea state was like that day. Uh, let's see. And then the last thing, oh, I, I do the date and the time, of course. And then the last thing that I do is a profile of the water column using this tool. This is much fancier than a Secchi disc. This is a little castaway. It is a CTD, which is an instrument that's very commonly used in oceanography. CTD stands for conductivity which helps us calculate salinity, T for temperature, and D for depth. So you can see this one has a weight attached to it as well, um, which will pull it straight down into the water. And as this sinks down into the water column, it's going to take hundreds of measurements of salinity, temperature, and depth. So that when I pull it back up and connect it to the computer, I can see a nice profile of how the temperature and salinity changed from the top of the water column all the way to the bottom. So to use this, I'm just going to turn it on with my stylus and sometimes it takes a minute because it's going to connect with some satellites so that it can locate us, locate my GPS position. So to use this, all I'm going to do is hold my reel by this black piece lower the castaway whoops i better start it first okay press start now i'm going to hold it just under the water surface for 10 seconds nine eight seven six five four three two one and then i'm going to let it free fall to the bottom just hold this black piece and let it go That 10 seconds at the beginning just helps the sensor calibrate itself. Okay, it's hit the bottom, so now I'm going to turn around and just wind it back up.
Okay, back to the surface. Okay, this went down to a depth of about 55 meters. And in that time, the instrument took 647 samples. So the sensor is this little metal bar inside here. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, so that sensor measured temperature and salinity with depth 647 times in the time that it took to go down and then to come back up. And that is my monthly time series.